Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the new updates that Photoflow just dropped a few hours ago. Uh, my karma is uh, it's bad because I actually have a great microphone. I just want to say that because uh, there are people complaining about the microphone that I'm using uh, and I use like a regular microphone so to say but I have actually a very good microphone but for some reason like for a month or something like that the microphone was not working and I actually find the cable I was thinking that this is because of the cable uh, but I tested today and it was not the cable so I should probably I uh, have to fix it myself or give to someone, I'm not very good with hardware. Uh, but yeah, fortunately, until I fix my microphone, this will be the sound quality that you hear. Unfortunately, I wanted this, I wanted this video to be with better sound, but yeah. So, and the other thing that I wanted to say before we start is that I... Um, wanted to actually do I actually prepared a few videos and I wanted to record one of them today but I don't want to post two videos in the same day so uh, yeah today we're going to talk about the uh, updates and later this week or the beginning of next week just is, expect uh, a lot more videos from me uh, we are going to talk about camera we're going to talk about uh, cloud functions finally uh, and we are going to talk about dynamic links as well so yeah there are videos to cause but today we are going to talk about the update that just came like I said a few hours ago uh, we are going to talk about real-time collaboration uh, and we're going to talk about custom code in main dart about dart, uh, dart mode images uh, and saving existing widget as team uh, widget pin code update the widget and many more things so that is going that is what we are going to talk today so let's start with the real time uh calibration calibration why can i say this word for teams and uh enterprise so let's start with that uh if you don't have a Teams or Enterprise account, you cannot, uh, there's no, this function is not for you, of course, uh, but the whole idea of this function, uh, as I have a regular account as well, I don't have a Teams account or Enterprise account, but the whole idea is that uh, now there is ability to actually, uh, the people, to actually work the same people to actually work uh, on the project uh, at the same time in real time uh, and um, uh, and the whole idea is that this this looks that work like uh, there are a lot of platforms out there I think Figma is one of them but I'm not sure because I'm not a UI UX uh, designer so I can confirm that but there are a lot of platforms the one that I think is uh, the Google Docs that a lot of people or Google PowerPoint or not PowerPoint but the Google Sheets uh, that more than more than one people can work at the same time in real time and there is a video actually in the the flow channel that I can show you uh, from yesterday the live sessions that the photo flow channel are doing and here we have Will and here we have Andrew and they're actually working at the same project in real time and you can actually see uh, the mouse of Andrew in this case uh, moving around and you can see the widget on the left, left side uh, that the, they're switching if someone clicks somewhere uh, the widgets are switching as well so you can see uh, who is touching so to say or who is selecting which widgets and uh, so you see the other mouse it's here in your own mouse you can see it looks like in a normal mouse uh, and there is this uh, it's the same way uh, for a rather uh, another way around right if you move something or do something on your end the other person will see <clears throat> the mouse like that with the cover you have a personal cover uh, and then you have the you can actually see the avatar 
of the other person as well. So this is it. It's actually a great improvement. Uh, and yeah, if you have uh, such accounts, uh, I think uh, it would be much appreciated, uh, this uh, update. Because previously, I think when someone visits the page, the right you can still visit the page but it was only read mode and the right side was not uh, accessible uh, so yeah that is totally great right now uh, great improvement you can actually see the uh, you can actually see the same thing here you have your own mouse here and on the right side you have another person mouse who is working at the same time at the same project which is great and then we have uh, the custom code uh, in main Dart. So this is super useful if you're wondering if why this is uh, something that is uh, like in the great news and why they put it on the second most valuable thing the upgrade was about. Uh, it's actually Previously, when you need to change something in the main Dart file, which is the main file, it's like when you have websites, you have index.html, for example, or index.php or whatever index you have, it will be the main file that will be open. And in further, all, further, all, all Flutter projects, and of course Flutterflow, because Flutter, Flutterflow is built, by, uh, built on top of uh, Flutter, uh, and the language that is using its Dart, uh, you have the main.dart, and this is the uh, file that is going to be open first. Uh, and previously, in, in order to change this file, you had to actually uh, download the source code, and then you, you can manually change the file, but then you have to deploy it from Android Studio or Xcode, and it was not very convenient. But right now you can do it straight in your project. So if I've read it, my project, you already know about this project, I think. So if you're watching my videos and if you actually go to uh, custom code, now you have the custom functions, the custom widgets, the custom actions. And on the bottom, you have custom files uh, and the custom file we're talking about it's main.dart. So uh, I was thinking, can I actually mess with this file? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, fortunately, you cannot straight uh, change this file uh, because it, if you want to change something on this file, it will it will say like uh, cannot edit in uh, read mode uh, read only editor. Uh, and I think the reason for that is that uh, Flutterflow actually is preventing users from messing around with the main dot file, uh, main dot dart file, because uh, if you actually make uh, one single mistake, uh, the whole project will go to the trash, or you have to actually fix your own uh, fix your own code. Flutterflow will 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 not be able to fix your code when you mess with uh, made that dart. So uh, they actually made it a uh, real fancy solution for that. You can still change the main dot dart file uh, using actions. So the thing is that if you have an action, uh, uh, this is let's say for example, I have an action for bunch delete for example doesn't really matter what action you're going to use you have two options you have uh, an action that will come from uh, when it's uh, initiating initiating the action or you have the final action so you have the opportunity to add actions at the beginning of the main uh, uh, function and you have the opportunity to add custom actions at the end of the main function so what is the difference between between those two the difference is that when you add at the beginning of it it will actually run before anything gets run in your app so you can imagine that before anything that it's loaded in your app it will run this action and the other way around is that when everything is loaded then you can uh, fire the custom action that you have over here so <clears throat> So I will have I will have like uh, 
have like a lot of actions. I think I don't see all my actions. Probably you have to. Probably there are specific actions that you can import only. Uh, so I can see right now I have, for example, uh, code total, uh, which is calculate. I think it's the calculate total. Uh, so if I actually search here for code total, uh, it should be this action. So it's this action. I think it's a very simple action which is getting the total from my app state uh, and then I have from prices a list of prices in my app state and then I'm actually calculating the total uh, based on the quantities from the app state and the prices from the app state I have two lists with the quantities and prices and I'm, I'm, I'm calculating the total so I can put that uh, <clears throat> so I can put that in my uh, action and to be honest I have no idea why I cannot put all actions because for example I have this uh, maybe it's because if I have the calculate solo it's the reason for that is that I don't have any uh, arguments and I think that's why you can include that because I think most of the uh, most, of the, most of the custom actions I have actually arguments in them so that's why uh, I cannot include them because if you have an argument, and I think this is the case, because if you have an argument, uh, you cannot actually su supply this argument when you're uh, including this in the main file. But you can, I think you should be able to still uh, use your uh, app state. So if you want to supply some data to your uh, app, you should, you, should, you should still be able to do it using app states. Uh, and you can actually include uh, more than one then you can actually see the code change in real time uh, and you can move them around I think yes you can move them around so you can be like talk to me will be the first action will be executed and code total will be the second action and here I can have like export uh, uh, export uh, Firebase uh, and here I can have like speech to text uh, which is another action and you can delete them with uh, the trash icon of course so yeah this is how you do it why you have this right now because uh, why they added actually is because some packages in the package that they have like they say they you need to initiate it this initiate that blah. How, why I can't say that word uh, and um, it made that uh, Dart file that's why uh, so if you have any package that you uh, have to be done in the main Dart file this is how uh, you have to do it if you actually have some recommendations for the packages uh, that are using that uh, and that you have to change it the main that dart file let me know I cannot think of top of my head of any package uh, but I'm actually thinking about to start a new section in my uh, channel and I'm going to talk about packages only uh, so I, I will implement different packages I'll start with the camera one because I think it's a popular package uh, that mostly a lot of people we want to use uh, so yeah, if there are packages that you want to uh, do a video about it, how you can use them, let me know in the comments below uh, and I will uh, do it in the future. Okay, and then we have the dark mode images. So <clears throat> the dark mode images, uh, it's actually a great if you're UI UX uh, designer uh, because I am not like I'm always saying. Uh, and that's why uh, this is not so fancy for me but of course like I said if you are uh, then I think it is it should be uh, for you uh, I never actually use the drag option that you can actually drag your image uh, just like that I think there's an ocean or C, I'm not sure. Okay, but the, uh, the whole idea is that now I should be able uh, to have, uh, I should be able to, a, I should be able to have light mode and dark mode. And I think here I don't have it because I don't include my dark mode. So if I go to app, um, is it here or they move it here? I'm not sure about it. Let's see. So, 
in the settings I should be able to switch my dark mode somewhere here maybe in teams they move it in teams let's see covers dark mode yeah so now it's here previously it was in the settings but now it's here so if I switch the dark mode on and if I go over here uh, here I can switch the on and off I can switch the dark mode on and off and now I should be able to see an option that is saying that I can use uh, dark mode. Uh, fortunately, this only works for assets, seems so, because you have the set dark mode. Uh, and if I choose the network, I don't see the set uh, the set for dark mode. I only see it for assets. So if I choose an asset, I can do it with set for dark mode. So I have the light mode, for example, will be this, uh, but the dark mode will be this. Right now I'm using the same image. Probably I should upload another image. Uh, so the image I should go to assets and then I can click this not assets. This is assets. And then I can upload this image. Which is a demo image. I have a lot of them uh, in for for, 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 for for related images. So now if I switch, you can actually see there this is another image and if I switch to light mode this is another image. Of course, uh, this is not how you have to use that. Use that. Uh, you should have like a log or something like that and if you switch to light mode or dark mode uh, the background of the image can be, I think, PNG because PNG don't have any background and you, sh you still should be able to use the background of the actual core. Uh, but if you're using uh, some other format uh, than, uh, of image, uh, then you should use uh, the, the light mode, the dark mode. And for the network path, if you're using a network image, um, you can still actually do this uh, and let me sh show you real quickly how you can do that uh, let me add another image because i want to have a default image right now so it, i just want to have a default image exactly like that i have the i have uh, like almost the same image but this one looks prettier uh yeah much prettier the last one looked looked darkish to me okay so the thing is that let's say that i have let, let's add one more because i need to have around the one more random image not a button of course i need an image it's this image over here uh yeah good image i like that image as well so let me take the path of this image and then let me show you uh what i mean so i will use the conditional visibility and i will use uh condition if else so i will have a condition if else and this condition if else uh will actually have a condition and this will be a single condition uh and or maybe i can do it with yeah i would exactly so i'll do a condition single condition and then here i'll use and i'll say and I'll use the global properties. So if I click the global properties here, I can have the light mode and dark mode. So I have the light mode. So I say, if this is equal to light mode and this is equal to true, and if it is a light mode, then, and I want to actually use an image for that. Uh, I don't know why this is a Boolean I think I should be able to use an image. Yeah, of course, of course not here. Uh, I should do it here. So that's a mistake for me. Sorry about that. I should do it in the path, of course. So in the path, I can have a conditional value. Again, single condition and then global properties and then uh, light mode. Let's say light mode doesn't really matter if it's light or dark mode. Uh, one of them works uh, so I would say if this is a light mode uh, give me this image so let me just copy and paste it now I put a random string but if it's a dark mode because I want this image to be my dark mode and uh, this image will be my light mode so I will save it for now uh, and I want to actually take okay okay let me just 
place another image because I want to take a path to some other image. I cannot copy and paste two images at the same time, unfortunately. So I'm copying this image right now and then I am I will go into paste it over here. So let's confirm it. So the idea is that this will be my light uh, light mode image and this will be my dark mode image. If I change it right now, you will not see uh, the difference. Uh, fortunately, uh, and the reason is that uh, conditional values are not working uh, in the editor itself. I have to run a test mode uh, and there was actually people yesterday complaining that the test mode was not working, but it was working for me. There was an issue with Flutterflow and they quickly fixed it. Uh, so uh, it is actually loading yesterday that the test mode load like uh, less than one minute which was amazing and surprised me like a lot because uh, uh, that is a big improvement uh, they didn't include in the update uh, but uh, yeah i think the test mode loads uh, much much faster i don't know what do you think about it but i think so uh, and then i can now delete those two images because i don't need them and then while this is loading, let's go to uh, let's go to the other one. So I just show you how you can do it with the network path. You can actually use, I think, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but I think, yeah. So you can use this for network path, and I think for assets you cannot use that, but there is an option for that, right? So you can use it like that for asset images. Okay, and then we have the safe existing widget as team widget uh, and I think the idea of that let me just see if that is loaded okay it's not still it's not yet uh, and then the idea is that is that if you have a button for example and you have I don't know the width of the button to be 200 uh, and then the uh, style so this is about styling uh, so I have like a yellow button wow that looks ugly uh, and then I will have the text to be torque one and then I will have the uh, font to be this one and then okay let's say that I'm super in not into UI and UX design and I really like this button uh, and I said to myself, wow, this button looks great. I want to save it and reuse it. Uh, so you can actually right click and say uh, save, uh, save as team style widget. Or you can actually click over here on the top right where, it's, uh, where you can do the same thing, basically. So if I click on the top right, I will save my amazing yellow or i can say my yellow because i don't think it's amazing but yeah let's say that is amazing my yellow button and then create a style and now i have the style so in theory i should be able to click over here create a new button and i should be able to use the style so if i click this style this is my new style those here will be all my styles sorry here will be all my styles and if i click this style and I can choose this style and boom, voila. Now this style uh, is reusable, which is great actually. Uh, and I think this is much appreciated for the people who is uh, styling the same button over and over again. And there is no copy, there there was not copy for that, like a copy and paste button for queries. Uh, so that's why I think this is actually a great improvement. And while this is still loading, so I can show you the uh, light mode and dark mode using the uh, network path. Uh, let's see the pin the pin code widget. So the pin code widget. Uh, let me zoom a little bit. Probably it's better uh, like that. And then I can add. Well, that's amazing buttons here. And I can add my pin code widget. Uh, it's this one and then uh, the new thing about the pin code widget is that when you go to actions and you are opening the actions and you have a new action here uh, so it's not a new action actually it's a new kind of an action so we have previously I think we have only on completed 
and now we have on change so if I use on change uh, I can actually uh, I can actually compare I think I can compare right uh, so I will so let me show you what I mean real quickly I can have a text and this text will have uh, like something is wrong with digit and then I will have the digit number whatever it is uh, and then here uh, I can actually say um, I can actually have uh, a custom function uh, and I think uh, what my idea is that if uh, if a number it's uh, uh, inputted if the number is inputted wrongly uh, you can now uh, track that and you can get a message or you can make the number I think you can make the number in different color like in the red color because this number it's uh, uh, it's not right or something like that uh, and you can actually do it so first of all you can do it on change so let me uh, let me have the app state I'm, I'm loving app states uh, and I'm doing app state but yeah okay in this case you're right about it there are people already telling me uh, can you why you're doing an app state why don't do a page state because we have page states right now okay I would do it in a page states but that's only for you guys because you asked me so I would do a page state and this would be my initial uh, pin let's say initial pin and my initial pin will be a string and my initial value will be one two three four let's say and then I'll confirm it and I'll add another one and, I, and this another one will be uh, user pin and the user pin will be the pin that the user is uh, supplying right now and this will be empty because there will be nothing in this pin uh, and then I think I should be able right now to click on the pin uh, and then to have on change update the user pin so update page state the page state will be user pin and I want to update the user pin and I want to set value and the value will be the widget it will be the widgets uh, the widget state and now I can actually uh, I can actually say here uh, input me the widget uh, the widget state uh, so I can have widget state pin code and let me show you what I mean I hope this is loaded let me reload it real quickly okay before before that I just want to say that I switched the text manually and I forgot to switch the text sorry about that uh, so we talked about the dark mode images uh, but I can actually show you uh, can I actually show you that yeah I forgot to link it uh, to the actual page we we're talking about uh, so that's why I had to instant reload again but like I said we already talked about the dark uh, dark mode images from assets and I showed you how you can actually uh, use the dark mode images but for network part so you can have a light mode and dark mode based on the uh, light mode or dark mode and I'm about to show you that and then we continue with the pin code okay finally uh, that loaded uh, and I have to click menu okay so now you can see this image and this image like I said I think I deleted the images right yeah so this is the light mode image or this was actually the dark mode image and if I go to light mode I should be able to see my light mode image I was not thinking that I should <laughs> I was not thinking that this will reload the whole instant again uh, because I had hard time loading the instant, mo uh, instant reload uh, so yeah we'll see you <laughs> I will pass it because this will not load fortunately for some reason 
Okay, it loaded. That's great. Now I click over here and then the menu. And you can see the same image. Great. Uh, fortunately, I don't think that this can be tested uh, in test mode, it seems so. Because I know that this works, uh, but I guess that this is not for some reason working in instant mode. Uh, but yeah, it should work. Like I said, if you test it on device, it should work. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to show you, uh, and I already, like I said, I already talked about the uh, widget as a team. Uh, we talked about those buttons, if you haven't watched that. And then uh, we are on pinned uh, code. So I was about to show you that you can actually write three, four, for example, five, six, and you can actually see uh, the text over here. Uh, and the idea is that you should be able to actually compare this text right now. So I should be able to do it something like um, something like additional value, for example. And then I should be able to have something like addition. Uh, and then here I should be able to have something like uh, compare my uh, init pin with my so I in theory I should have a conditional value uh, or a custom function or code expression uh, both works but let's do it with a custom function so let me just write a custom function real quickly and uh, this would be like comparing strings or compare uh, pin code. So if I go to custom function, this would be compare pin code. Uh, and you can actually, I will not skip that because you, I want the people to actually see how I'm running my functions. Uh, so you can actually get data from argument, but I'm not actually getting the data from an argument. I think I have the app state uh, I'm not sure if the, if I have access to the app state using custom function, um, but I think I am not able to get the app state using a custom function, right? Uh, so okay, so we will use it with the arguments then. So we have the init uh, pin, which will be the initial pin, and then we have the user pin. Okay, and then we have to compare it here. So we have an if, uh, there's a lot of ways that you can do that, but let's do it very simple. So first of all, let's put a no safety, so no safety, and then you have to say init pin. If we don't have an init pin, it will be one, two, three, four, because this is my init pin. And then the user pin, if we don't have a user pin, then let's do something like zero, 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 zero. Okay. And then here we will compare. So we have the init pin. We'll compare the first pin. If we have a four digit pin, of course, because we can have like, uh, not four digit pin, but something else. So we can compare the first digit uh, but I'm saying digit, but this would be an actual charter. It's not a digit uh, because this is a string and we can get the first charter from the string using uh, this. So it's uh, brackets and then uh, all, every charters start from zero. So the zero one will be one and this will return zero in my case over here. Uh, and I will say, and I will return actually a string and I will just have something like a uh, string and this would be uh, text, for example. And I have nothing in my text, but here I will say text and I will combine, I will combine this text uh, with my text that is saying uh, the first letter, the first letter or the first digit first digit is wrong 
Okay, and then I'll have the same thing for all other digits. Uh, this is not an optimal code. Uh, the code can be right better, uh, but I don't have the time right now for that. It's only four digits. So we can use Control D to select both digits and I'll put two, uh, one and then two and then here three. Okay, and then this will be the first letter is wrong. And then here I will say end, or I will say the second, because I don't know actually if the first letter is wrong. Maybe the first letter is not wrong. And here I will say the uh, second digit is wrong. The third digit is wrong. And then I would say if I can spell the fourth, it would be great. The fourth, not sure. Probably it's not that. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. And then I return the text. And then I can save this function. And then I can check for errors. And I can go to test function. And if I test this function right now using not uh, digits, it uh, I would not get any text. I should not get any text. But I get the fourth digit is wrong, the second digit is wrong, the third digit is wrong, the fourth digit is wrong. Okay, that's interesting because if I use it with one, two, three, four, and then I get it with one, two, three, four, uh, I should be able to not get any text actually. It should be an empty text. But I'm not getting an empty text, okay? Oh, yeah, because my logic is wrong. I should do it with if it's not uh, if it's not the same because right now I'm saying if they are the same then uh, I'll put this text but my idea is that if they are not the same uh, then I'll put this text so let's try that again and we should not get any text right now so let's just wait we have one which is no text and then if I get seven here so one two three four will be my initial pin but if I use if the user writes seven here and just uh, so you can see the second digit is wrong and then we can actually do that uh, what is the error that we are having? We have the custom code. So every time you change the custom function, you have to uh, compile the custom functions and you have to also compile uh, custom actions in widgets as well. I have no idea why because I haven't touched any custom widget, uh, but I still have to compile them. So the idea, my idea is that I will have, uh, I will have the custom function. So the text here, will come from the custom function. The custom function is uh, compare pin code and I'll get the pin code compared by the page and I have the initial pin and I will have the user pin which is this one over here and then I can say confirm. Uh, what is wrong? Should return a string and uh, this is the function is returning a string you can see here it's returning a string i'm getting a string this is a string and uh, maybe if i put uh okay so it should have a default value for some reason uh, it's actually a good practice to put a default value i will always put a default value but now i don't want it to put a default value okay and now i have to oh okay I can switch without instant reloading. I didn't know that. Okay, but let's read the reload now. Okay, wow, I have a karma. Like every time I'm recording a video, I have to actually instant reload five or six times in order to load uh, the actual project and test mode. But usually when I don't record any video, it's like or work, work instantly. Wow, okay, I'm surprised. Okay, so let's go back to what I wanted to show you. If we go over here right now, so here we have the first digit is wrong, the second digit is wrong, and the third digit is wrong. And this is actually because we have the default values and because of the default values, uh, this is uh, the case, I think. Uh, if we go over here, 
uh yeah the, i think the reason is that because we don't have any default value over here uh but we can actually put the same default value over here so it could be one two three four and one two three four and then i have to instant reload again okay after six times again and 15 minutes um, uh, it, uh, it finally <laughs> has to reload the page but we can still see the, the text and now we have index uh, index out of range yeah so we have this index out of range and the reason for the index out of range is because the function we didn't uh, roll it correctly we have to change the function and the function I think was uh, this mode loads so slow. Uh, I am not probably going to do it because it takes like, believe me or not, it takes like hours to load the test mode. Uh, let's see if this time it loads faster. Uh, but in the meantime, I will actually continue uh, because I just took like 43 minutes now uh, about that. Uh, but if you want to get the code, uh, if this code is not working, uh, and if you want to get the code, uh, I think it's worked, but let's let's test it out. Uh, let me know in the comments and I'll write you the actual code that is working. Uh, and then we have uh, other improvements. Uh, we are increased our project size limit by 25%, which is great. I don't, I don't think that a lot of people actually have uh this uh reached the actual limit size uh i think it's around 100 or probably 150 pages uh so there are, i don't think there are a lot of people are reaching that and we also have uh, add, uh we added a jump to index action for page views uh let's try okay now it's loaded okay <laughs> that's that's great okay let's see if the actual pin code it's working uh, so if i click to it's not working again okay i will because uh, it's out of range uh, and it says index should be less than one but it's actually one um, so yeah like i said i'll post the actual code that is working uh, in the comments below so you can get the code uh, but you get the idea the idea is that you can actually compare uh, every each charter of the user uh, or every each uh, digits of the user and then you can output like a text the first digit is wrong or the second digit is wrong uh, it is actually working like that the whole idea is that if you actually press only one charter right now the whole idea is that it will uh, get an error like that index of uh, range uh, i can actually uh, test it over here right i can just test it over here and i can say the lead is actually one and this would be two and this would be three and this would be four i think this is the error that i did uh, and if i test it i should now be, not be able to see this uh, error but let's see if i'm wrong yeah I'm getting one, which is okay. This is no text at all. And if I get three, 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 I should get three, no, two actually, two texts uh, outputted. And this would be, yeah, the second digit is wrong, the four digits is wrong. Yeah, so this is working. Let me just instant reload it one more time. Uh, did I save it? Yes, I save it, okay. Uh, and then if I go over here and add a page uh, a page view so if i add a page view like this over here you don't see it but it's over here uh, there is now they say that there is now a button uh, you can actually use a button i don't know i'm not sure about it but let's test it out you can use a button and then you can have like jump to index or page view I don't know what's the action called actually. Um, we added the jump to index action for page 
views. Maybe it is inside the page views. I'm not sure actually. I don't use a lot of page views. Uh, let's see. So jump to index. Uh, it's not there. So let's see. If I go to add action, those are all the actions. I think it should be in UI interaction. So we have the upload data, delete data. It's not the time, it's not the core, it's not the bottom sheet, it's not the scan, it's not the launch, it's send SMS, call number, send email, launch map, dark mode, control page view. Probably it's this one over here, I think. It's page, yeah. So we have the page view and we have the previous page, the next page, the first page, the last page, and now we have jump to index. And now we can have index, let's jump to index two, for example, or index, yeah, index two sounds okay for me. And this is the first button. So let's, uh, right over here this would be to jump to index one and I can actually do this for jump to index how many indexes do I have I think I have one two three I should have three indexes here I have a button here which I have to delete uh, we copy that and delete this. And this one over here, it's, let's paste it over here. So let's delete this action, paste this action over here. Okay, now we have jump to index two, and now we can do it jump to index three. So I have paste, Trump to in the same action, but I would change the index to three, and then I can have the button will be jump to index three. Jump to index three. Okay, great. And now I can I have to compile the functions, of course, compile this one and compile this one again uh, uh, the custom code as well. But the good think about that is you don't have to wait for compile to be uh, finished you can actually instant reload instead and it will work uh, but of course right now my instant reload is not working at all it just worked like the, the first time I showed you guys that it's not working it just worked I think the, inst the instant reload is shy uh, or maybe not try it. Maybe this is the opposite around because when I show it, it's is a reload, but when it's not in camera, on camera, uh, it's not loading. Okay, so if it's load, I will show you, but if it's not load, let's continue. So we added a new uh, warning when asset size, it's it's too large, that's great. And then they fixed, like as they said, 60, they closed actually 60 GitHub uh, issues in the meantime. And if you have some issue, I would recommend you to uh, uh, to post it in the GitHub issue tracker. And we have this actually quick navigate to project uh, settings from the uh, comment panel. Uh, I didn't get that to be honest, the comments. So if it, they say that if you click Control K, it's freeze, like it's freeze like that. And then if I click the instant uh, reload, it starts loading again and then it freeze again. I have no idea why. If I click Control K, okay, so I have this full of flow command uh, palette. Uh, these are all the commands that you can actually uh, use right now. Uh, so you can navigate to settings. They said navigate. So let's say package, for example. So let's go to app assets. So if I click over here, I will instantly go to the app assets. Great, that's actually great because if I if I'm here, can I actually use the Control K to go to custom code. Is that possible? Go to custom action. Uh, yeah, and I'm actually going into the page of custom action. Oh, I haven't actually used that before. 
but it, uh, it looks convenient enough. So control K, it's not working anymore. Control K, no. Oh, it's control K, I'm, I'm pressing. Oh, it's actually command K, isn't it? Why is that working anymore? Ah, my karma. So, okay. So if I try control K, Ah, okay, so now it's working. It's control K. Yeah, and then I can go to settings, for example, and let's go to colors. Yeah, great, great. I haven't used that before, but looks great. And is that loaded? No. Yeah, okay, now it loads. Great, great, great. Let's go to menu. And I'll jump to index. Now index one. It's the last index, okay? That's strange. And then index three. I know we don't have an index three, right? Index one, okay. What about moving it to the middle? Index one, okay. It be, it seems that the index one is the last one. I have no idea why. Uh, but yeah, it uh, for certain it works. For sure it works. And then let's see the actual pin number. So let's try with one. Uh, and I have one, two, three, four, which is the default uh, value. You don't need to actually put the default value, I think. Then we have four. If I click four, I'll get the second digit is wrong. Let me zoom a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, and now this finally works. It's only on the default value. So let's say five. And let's say seven, for example. So it says the second digit is wrong, the third digit is wrong, and the fourth digit is wrong. But I think you can also use that, and I am actually sure that you can use that and cover uh, them differently. You can cover them a red, uh, and so on and so forth. So yeah, this is the working code. Let me just uh, show you the code one more time. Uh, compare, I think it's the compare code, yes, and I'll put it in my GitHub repo so you can see. And finally, uh, finally, if you are watching this like one hour from now, so we have the new feature we're working on. We have the some super cool out updates, which is great. Um, I really can't wait for that as well because I think a lot of users uh, can switch to Superbase uh, because right now we don't have the out uh, notification, uh, but soon we will have it. We have the action uh, components, components, which is great as well. We have the import API definitions from uh, Swagger. Um, I'm not sure what is that ab about exactly, but let's see when they uh, add it. And then we have conditional actions with more than two branches. That's great actually, because you can, if you have that, uh, you can actually navigate to different pages because right now you have like, you can navigate uh, to two pages if you have conditional uh, action uh, actions, but right now you can, for example, navigate to more than two pages, three, four, five. You don't have, you should not have any limitation. Uh, and then we have update the properties of multiple uh, widgets uh, simultaneously. That actually uh, looks great as well because this will give you a lot of flexibility and you actually uh, make your uh, projects work uh, faster. And then the final thing that I wanted to say, uh, first of all, thank you very much for, if you are still here, <laughs> thank you very much for that uh, and I actually made a website uh, for using the code uh, that I'm using in my videos and like I showed in my previous uh, I did a video about that if you haven't watched it you can watch it uh, but the whole idea is that you can actually click on okay right now it's not I should probably fix that isn't it get code it's not working for some reason uh, probably because there is a uh, issue uh, with JavaScript, but I will not get into it. But the whole idea is that when you click get code, you get the code and you can actually change the code. And when you click copy all widgets, I will actually fix that. So it will actually work by the time you watch this video. But yeah, 
thank you very much for watching and to bear with me and have a nice day bye bye take care